I'll start the lecture. And in our class, I want you guys to meet me in files and then final. And there should be a CAD base plan. So Julianne and Taylor, did I give you guys enough time? Okay, good. And then once you're here, let's just go ahead and download it. And it's up to you to decide where you want to download it. Um, I do have my Revit folder on my desktop. But I'm going to make a new folder inside of it and call it Final Project. And then even in the Final Project folder, I'm going to make another folder and call it CAD. I usually don't have a lot of CAD plans, but that way it just doesn't get in the middle of all my other stuff. So typically when I'm working on a project, I'll have a CAD folder. I'll um, have a Revit backup folder so that if I have backups that I want to keep, I'll drop it in there. And then I'll have a PDF folder. So basically the only thing in the main file is the actual PDF. Marge, come on in. Maybe? Is she chicken out? Is she gone? And we're back. <laughs> so as I was saying, just try to keep your files organized. It's one of those things, and I'm sure you guys have run into it in the semester, where it's frustrating to know which PDF was it, you know? What Revit file am I working in? So just try to be organized. Um, and since we're starting a project from scratch, this is the best time to kind of start good habits again. So I'm gonna go into Revit now, and I'm gonna do a new residential template. Uh, download what? Um, no, I just, I think I, let me go back and look. I think I just clicked on these three dots and I went to download. Or you can right click and do save link as. And when you do save link as, you can actually tell it where to go. If you do the three dots in the download, it by default just goes to your downloads. Does that help? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so now we're back here in Revit. And before I get started with pulling in the CAD file and starting everything, Let's all go to the Manage menu, and we're going to go to Phases. I'm going to keep my cursor here on my screen so you can see where I am. I'm going to hop to the board for a minute and kind of show you guys what Phases means graphically, and then we're actually going to start working with Phases. So does anybody need me to keep my cursor here for a minute? Actually, I think I'm going to keep my cursor there. So I have this open, and I have this right here. So here is what phasing is, and like I said, this is, I say often in the semester that like, oh, this is so powerful, this is so powerful, and today, everything that we've done up until this point that I have said is powerful has been convenient. And then what we're doing today is truly powerful, it does so much. Um, what phasing does is it allows you to work with one model. And in that one model, you can choose which building components are existing, which building components get demolished, and then the new stuff coming. So again, it's like working with a real building. And the best way to think about it is through time. So if you look on my screen that I have open right now, there is a past, and then there's also a future. And you can see that the future is towards the bottom. So in the past, we have the existing, and then after that, we have new construction. Now, we're going to add one more in between this, and this is going to be called demolition. And in fact, I'm not going to sketch on the board. I'll just kind of talk here, so if you guys want to listen to this in the future. But imagine this with me. So right now, we have a house on an existing lot on Mead Avenue. And in fact, I can even pull it up for us. So here's the existing house that all of us will be working with. And what we're doing today is we are going to draw this house in the existing phase. And essentially what we're doing is we're changing one more thing on our properties menu that we've never had to work with before. Up until this point, by default, Revit just assumes everything you're drawing is new construction because it typically is. 
So we're going to go into our properties menu and we are going to set it to new construction. I'm sorry, existing. And then after we draw the house, all of you guys get to decide what you want to demolish. So as a class, we are all at least going to, whoops, wrong way. I'm going to go up the street. So this back side of the house right here, this is an illegal addition. So we're all going to take this off together. So as a class, we'll at least be demolishing the back part. And then after that, you guys can decide how much more of the house you're going to keep or demolish, whatever you want to do. And then once you've finished your demo phase, then you come back into your Revit properties, change it to new construction, and you draw your new walls there. So part of this will be one, creating the new phases. So creating the phases, drawing in the correct phase, and if I'm being um, accurate here, we're not drawing, we're modeling. Okay, so we're modeling the correct phase. So that means that if you're working quickly, you want to make sure that if you're about to draw a new wall, that you're not drawing it in the existing, right? You can't go back and draw a new wall and say that it was a historic wall. That's being dishonest, okay? So we're gonna model in the correct phase. And then we're also going to learn something new. We're going to learn how to duplicate views. And this has application to many things not just phasing. So up until now, you have only been able to use your main floor plan once on your sheet, right? What we're about to be getting into is how you can start using your, more pl your floor plan on more than one sheet. So there is a way to duplicate views, and we'll go through the three different options you have and what you mean. And in fact, while we're at it today, I might even show you guys how to do an enlarged plan. It's usually a little bit later, but it might make sense to sneak it in today, okay? So we are at number one, creating the phases. So over here on the side, can you see that you can insert a phase before or after? Okay, you can also move them up and down, but if I'm on existing, I want to insert a new phase after. And if you double click in here, let's call this demolition. Everybody got that okay? Great. And then once you have that done, what I want you guys to do is in your properties menu, come all the way down to the bottom, and you see that there's a section for phasing. So this is something that we haven't had to think about before because we've always done new construction. But if you pull down on phase, you can see now that there's an existing, a demolition, and a new construction. And just think about it again as a time machine. So if you were to imagine that house, if you were to go to the existing, it'll show you the existing. If you hop back into demolition, it'll show you what's being demolished with dashed lines. And then lastly, new construction. It essentially knows what to show and hide depending on the phase that you've drawn it in, okay? Just like any other building component, whether it's a door, a window, or a wall, you can change its settings. So for example, if you draw a wall accidentally in existing and you meant it to be new construction, how do you think that you could change it back to new construction? Yeah, you just come back to this properties menu as it's highlighted, you come down to phasing and when you have something actually selected, it says phase created in. So if you accidentally put it in existing, it'll say phase created in existing, and you would just change it to new construction. So a lot of the same things that we've done before, but just a new application for it. Okay, so with that, let's start in existing. 
And for phase filter, let's go ahead and keep it at show all. So this will change a little bit um, depending on what phase we're in. So for example, when we get to new construction, I think we want to show previous and something else. We'll see once we get there. But for now, let's just keep it existing and show all. And do you guys see that my elevation markers went away? That just means that for the existing plan, there's no elevations. So you can create ex elevation markers and then call it the existing elevations, but it isn't required for the final project. I just want to see your completed ones, okay? So for this plan, um, what I'd like to do is go into insert and let's do import CAD because this will be a one and done. We don't need to link it. And let's go ahead and find that file that we just downloaded. Great. So now that we've got a base plan put in here, I am going to kind of help us out and go back to our files and we are going to look at the, um, uh, I think the ceiling heights that I had, I think it's this one right here. So we can start setting this up. So the existing ceiling is at nine feet and let's assume that we have just one feet of structure before the roof, okay? so. Let's do our, um, our roof level set to be um, at 10 feet, okay? So let's hop back in here. And right now, we don't have a second floor. So depending on what you want to do for this project, you might keep the second floor but call it second floor addition and just change the phase to be in the future because right now, the first floor doesn't have one. So hop into your, and any of your views, and so again, for now, I'm deleting the second floor because I don't need it. You guys might come back and add it again with your phasing. And then the roof will start it at 10 feet. And let's go ahead and even delete the foundation. Okay, so I'll just do first floor and roof. And once we have these two basic things in, let's go back to our first floor. And I want to set up my 3D view um, so I can kind of see it as I'm drawing. I can't remember the shortcut. WT, there you go. <laughs> that took me a sec. Okay, so we don't know what these walls are, so we can just draw generic walls. And, um, well, last semester people wanted to see the wood siding. So let's just see how, how it aligns if we pick the wood siding walls. I think we should be okay, but let's go ahead and just put in our walls on the first floor. And for the height, I'm going to go up to the roof. I'm going to do finish face interior and let's go ahead and do wood siding on wood set stud. Everybody with me so far? Yeah? And then essentially what I'm going to do is just trace around the house. And the thing that will be a little bit odd, do you guys want to take a peek at my screen real quick? You'll have to come back and draw a wall here too, because that's actually an exterior wood siding wall. And can you guys see just in my model, I drew that last wall wrong, so I'm going to have to flip that in a minute, but that's all right.
Oh man. At some point I went wrong and I have to flip a lot of my faces. So do you guys see that? Did I do all of them wrong? No, not quite. This is why the 3D view helps me. I can flip and then I'm going to use the align command to get it back where it needs to go. I'm going to change the align to be wall faces. That's a lot easier for me to use. It's on wall faces and it's still ignoring me. That's okay. I'm going to ask my friend Google if there's a way to reverse the wall face in CAD or in Revit without moving it. And just put the siding on what would be the north face. Okay, I'm not seeing it, so I'll just, I'm gonna go through and just flip all of my walls and then I'll go back and align them on the plan. And in fact, I'm just going to extend the one I have all the way out. They used to be connected, so we'll do that again here. So I'm going to go ahead and start the lecture again. Now let's do this real quick. Um, nope, this will not show us anything. Don't do anything real quick. I'm going to ask you guys, so we need to put in windows and doors that are indicated on our existing CAD plan, right? Right now we can't see those windows and doors. How can I change my view to see them? Daddy? Wireframe. Woohoo! So come down here and change it to wireframe, and you should be able to see everything. Um, I wanted, this is going to be such a side note, but write it down. It just came to me. Um, there were a couple people on the midterm that I noticed that when you guys put in your furniture, your detail level was still set to course. And so when you went to print, your sofas just kind of look like a solid mass instead of an actual sofa. So when you go to print, make sure to look at your interior elevations and even your plans, and make sure that you see the detail for your 3D objects. If you don't, at least change it to medium, and then maybe even to fine, because depending on who made your sofa, it might stay a blob until you change it to fine, okay? And I'll watch out for that a little bit more um, for the final, but I forget, I forgot to mention it last time, so, okay. Enough of that side note, let's go back over here. Now on our little note that I had for our um, class notes, so all of our windows are at six feet eight inches okay everything else we can assume that we don't have the information so we'll go through together and kind of put in some generic windows now in real life we would actually go in person and measure these out but for now we're just going to try to get the proportions right okay so you can see that these two have the same window height and in fact i think all of them have the same window height it's just the width that changes so let's put in this first one, kind of eyeball it, and then if it looks right, we'll do the same for all the others, okay? Um, I don't know if we have this particular window where there's two slides that come into the middle, but let's see what we can find. So I'm gonna come back here and just go to architecture window. I'm still in my existing plan, and let's 
see there's casement double, but we don't have those lines on them. Let me go to load family. And you guys go take a peek in there too. If you see a pretty good generic window, let me know. And maybe that's what we'll grab. I only see these fancies. How about you guys? Yeah? Yep, too fancy. Okay, we can just use the window casement triple. I can see if there's an easy way to turn off, um, these aren't mullions, I totally forgot what they're called. Anybody remember? I'll remember in a sec. <laughs> I'll see if there's an easy way to just turn that off of the family. But um, I'm just going to throw one in there, not knowing the size, and then I'll edit the rest of them. Because what I should have done is measured this window opening before I put it in, but that's okay. I'm going to do that now. So this particular window opening is almost 10 feet, 9 feet 11. I'm going to go to edit type to see if I can easily change that. And in fact, I'm just going to make it 9 feet. Because I think that makes more sense. Three 6-foot segments. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah. And I think this was four feet tall. Looking at my screen, I know we're missing some of the information, but do those proportions look right to you? About four feet? What was the um, four feet. So nine feet by 48. And let's do this at the end, but do you see right now my head height is at seven feet? On this project, it does say that it's six feet eight inches. Um, and so once we get all of our windows in, we'll select one, do a select similar, and then just change all of them at once. But now I'm gonna go ahead and measure out this one. That's three feet. So I'll have to change this one too. So I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to make this one 36 by 48. So for the width I'm going to make it 36. And then the height 48. And I think a lot of the rest of the windows are the same. So you can go through and keep adding them. No, not for this particular one.
And it looks like we have one more window size in the living room. I'm guessing it's, oh, that one's five feet. So you can create one more. Okay, so let's go on to the next part of our project. Now, before we get too far, what we've done right now is we have created the phases, and now we have started modeling in the correct phases. What we need to do next is duplicate the views, because our first floor will have three different phases to it. It has the existing, it'll have the demolition, and then last but not least, it'll have the new construction. And all of it will be part of the same model, but as you guys know, we can only use that view one time. So in order to put all of those different phases onto different sheets, we have to duplicate them. So to start, let's rename this first floor. So just right click and go to rename. And let's call it first floor existing. And then later on, you can change it to like main level existing or whatever you want to call your levels. But for now, we'll just keep it first floor existing. Um, will you guys just put on a couple dimensions for me? It doesn't matter where. I just want you guys to have a few things of annotation for me. And I might even throw in a room label. I'm just going to call it test. So everybody got at least one or two dimensions on their plan? Yep. Okay. Now once you guys have your dimensions, what we're going to do is this is going to be showing you guys options on how to duplicate your views. Okay, so before we actually duplicate it, I'm going to show you what the different options are. So let me close this 3D view, but right click on first floor existing for me, and then go up to duplicate view. And do you see how there's three different options? Yeah? So let's try the first one, duplicate. And then you should go into first floor existing copy one. You guys see that? Tell me what it duplicated. Yep, so everything but the dimensions and the annotations. I had a room on there too, it didn't duplicate that, okay? So this is still the same model though, so it's just duplicating the view, it's not duplicating the model. So if I come in here and I delete this wall and all the windows are gone, if I go into first floor existing, do you see how they're still connected? So it's a duplicate view, not a duplicate model. I had a lot of heartbreak a few years ago over this. So I, I want to make sure that you guys realize duplicate view does not mean duplicate model. Okay. So the first one, it duplicates everything but annotation. And then if we right click again, what's the second one? Detailing. Yep, duplicate with detailing. So do that one. And do you guys see that it copied the detailing? So I have my room label, I have my dimensions. Did that work for you guys too? Okay, so it's up for you to decide. Do you want all of the annotation? Or do you want to start from basically just a fresh copy? No annotation. Now the next one is similar to what we just did, but do you see how it says duplicate as dependent? So when we do that one, do you see how it actually nests underneath this one? So that means whatever I do here, so if I 
delete this dimension and then add a new one. And again, these make no sense, but that same thing is happening in my, de in my dependent one. And similarly, if I take this and move it, it moved it here too. So this is a true duplicate. So if you really need to put two of the exact same copy of your plans in your set, this is what you would do. It'll have the same annotation. When one changes, the other one updates with it. This one down here, do you see that my five foot is there and my test didn't move? So it duplicated it the first time, but after it's been duplicated, they're independent of each other. Okay, so let me, I know I did that quickly, but let me go back to duplicate. If you wanted to start from scratch, which one would you do? Just duplicate, yep. So just duplicate, duplicates the model, none of the annotation, okay? If you wanted a true copy, so it copies everything that still happens in the original, which one would you do? Duplicate, Duplicate is dependent, yep. They just work with one another, all right? So those are ways that you can start placing more than one floor plan onto your sheets. You just duplicate them, but you can decide, or at least manage, how much you want to copy the original. I'm going to delete these for now. And let's do it. So if we are about to do some demolition plans, do you guys think that we need to copy any of the existing dimensions? Like, do we even need dimensions on a demo plan? Probably not. So in this case, I think you could just right click and do duplicate and then rename it as first floor demolition. Whoops. Just duplicate. Yep. This was one of the biggest takeaways from last semester, I think. And part of it was that it was summer semester. But I think we're so used to Revit automatically doing stuff for us that sometimes we forget what we need to manually do. So what I've said here is that even though you're calling it first floor demolition, you have to manually set that it's the demolition phase, right? It's not smart enough to know that, oh, they just wrote demolition, I'm gonna update it to be demolition. Do you guys know how to do that right now by yourselves? Yep. Maddie, where would I go? Yeah, so see how even though it says first floor demolition, it's actually existing, right? So you need to make sure that those two correspond with one another. Revit will not do it automatically for you, okay? And a lot of people, they kind of go back and forth between just show the existing and the demolition together, but I like to show them separate, you know, just so we have both of them. And truthfully, when you go to do your plans, you could just place the demolition plan because it shows the existing in the demo. I just like to do it separate in case that there, a lot of times the city will ask you for a separate existing plan, and so that way you can have it. And it's really fun to demo. What we are going to do, let's start with this wall back here. When we click on it, do you guys see that there is this cute little hammer that pops out, a sledgehammer? We can click on the sledgehammer and then, whoops, I need to save this. And 
once you have your little sledgehammer, you can click on the wall and you'll see that it'll automatically dash it. And dashed lines indicate that something has been demolished. Um, once a wall is gone, a window is gone with it. So you can demo a window independently from a wall, but you can't demo a wall and expect to keep the window because there's nothing there to hold it. Now this wall gets a little bit tricky, this one right here, because do you see that when we just try to do the back of the house, it does the whole wall? Okay, I'm gonna teach you guys how to split those walls. But before I do, one other thing that you can do is you can click on the wall and see where it says phase created existing and then phase demolished none. That's essentially your properties. So if you ever need to go back and change the properties of a wall, you can do it right there. So far so good because we haven't demoed it yet and it is in the existing phase, but that's just an example of how you can go and update something if you need to. And you can even demo it in here. Like for example, phase demolished demo. If you're a party pooper and don't like the mini sledgehammer, you can just do it there too. Okay. Let's talk about splitting this wall. Um, we may have talked about this weeks ago, but we're gonna talk about it again. So you can go up to split element SL, and remember that little exacto knife that comes up? Try to get it as close to this back wall as possible. And sometimes I even need to draw a little reference plane. Bless you. It's not being very nice. So I'm just going to draw a reference plane and see if I can chop it right on the reference plane. So again, SL is the shortcut. I can't get that exactly right, so I'm going to try to align it. That is not being very nice. I couldn't even align it, so I'm just going to drag it up. Whoa, it went crazy when I tried to drag it up. I'm going to pull this back here. Are you guys having trouble unjoining yours? Yeah, I just like zoomed in really, really yeah. And you're able to do it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Oh. Uh. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Holy cow. There we go. So now we've got two separate elements right there. And you can go ahead and demo this back wall as well. The split element? Okay, so this used to be the back part of the house right here. So this wall and this wall above it used to be connected. So right now, if you click on that wall, it's probably one whole piece. So what we wanted to do is do SL for split element and essentially split it at this back part right here. And I had to zoom in so close, like probably, and see it's a tiny bit off, but I'm gonna zoom out so I can't see that. It's close <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> That's what I had to do to get it into two separate pieces. So, I just un. Did you draw a reference plane here? That is like the hardest violation of the yawn jar ever in the history of this class. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you on my screen, because usually just the way that if you zoom in and in and in and in, eventually this will highlight. And you should just be able to click it once and it knows to chop it across the wall. I don't even know where I am. Yep. 
there we go. <coughs> so it's really just one click. And as long as you're on that wall, it'll just slice that whole wall. Okay, I'm gonna help you zoom in in just a bit, but will you um, at least demo these two walls for me? And then this one we'll come back to. So Heather, you can decide if you want to keep this wall for now or just demo the whole thing. This one you and I can fix later, but these two at least have those for me. Cool, so I'm in first floor demo and then what other phase do we also need? So we've got existing, demolition, what else do we need? New construction. New construction. So I'm going to let you guys do that on your own for just a minute or so. Try to remember the steps and then I'm going to help you guys um, kind of check to see if you did it right and walk through it with you in just a minute. I'm going to walk through it now. I know that wasn't very long, but hopefully it was enough for you guys to at least think about it. So I want to first duplicate my view. And it doesn't matter if I do demolition or existing, because remember they're the same model. We just changed the phasing on them. So I'll go ahead and duplicate my demolition view. And I don't have any detailing or annotation on here, so it really doesn't matter which one I do. So I'm just going to do duplicate. And then I will immediately rename it to either first floor new construction or first floor remodel. It's up to you depending on how you're approaching your project, like if it is a remodel, if you're just doing like all new construction. And then you guys tell me what's the last thing that I need to do here. So it's named the correct thing. Change the phase. Yep, change the phase. So down here, I want to go to new construction. And do you guys see that when I went to new construction, this demo back here is gone, right? And then let's do this. While we're in here, go to VV and let's turn off our CAD plan. Now jump back between existing and the remodel and let me know if you see some graphic differences. Maddie? How do you import? Oh, go to imported categories. And you'll see your CAD stuff and just uncheck it. There you go. So what graphic differences do you see between the existing and the remodel? Elevation. Yeah, so our elevation markers came back. This one's a little bit off, so I can move that one up here. Right? Um, and then what else do you guys see? Do you see any line weight differences? Um, like yeah, so in the existing, because the plan actually exists and stands, it's a heavy line weight. Um, but then in the remodel, what it does to differentiate between the new walls and the old walls is it makes the old walls lighter. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Now let's practice. Let's just draw a wall in our new construction phase and draw it wherever, but let's just graphically see the difference of that particular wall. It's going to be subtle. And actually, let me switch from thin line to thick line, and I think you can really see the difference there. Do you guys see that graphic difference? How it's darker? Yep. 
And let's say that when I'm working, I'm like, you know, I want to extend this whole part of the house. So take a peek at my screen real quick. See how I have this wall right here that I no longer want? I can click on it and under phase demolish, do you see how right now it says none? <laughs> Bless you. So that means it's existing, it's not demolished. I can change this to demo and say let's demo it in the demo phase. It goes away here, I have to do some cleaning up. But now if I go to demo, do you see how that wall's gone? Yeah. And now I'm back to my remodel. So over here, I just need to pull this wall back. I kind of missed the line on it. I'm going to pull it back even more. Oy. Okay, this is such a pain. Go ahead and take a look at how I have to fix this. AutoCAD is usually really, really good at knowing how to fix corners, but sometimes in phasing, it doesn't see where one is ending and one is beginning. Although it's so obvious to us, Revit doesn't see it. So what you have to do to fix this is right click on it and go to something called disallow join. And then what that does is you are kind of overriding Revit to try and fix it. So by default, it's joining everything. But by you saying, I am disallowing you to join it because you're doing it wrong, it'll just let you drag it wherever you think is right, rather than it doing automatically for you. So again, if you see your corners looking crazy like this, find this little blue nubbin, right click on it, and go to disallow join. So you're telling Revit, stop trying to fix it. I'm disallowing you to join this and then you can manually do it without it trying to fix itself. Okay, So that'll happen a few times, especially when you're trying to connect the existing to the old. Let me see what happens here. Okay, that time it was scared of me. It's like, oh, she's disallowing joys, guys. Well, that was not English. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay. So this is phasing in a nutshell. And what we have now, you have the start of your final project. Not all of the details are there. You know, we haven't drawn the existing roof yet or anything like that. Um, but with the existing roof, this is what I told my students last semester. So roofs are really above and beyond your call of duty. And so what I told everybody last semester was I would just draw one roof that we can all assume that your roof is demolished. So I don't have a roof demolition plan that I'm requiring for this project. I'm just requiring a roof at some point. And so you all can just draw your roof as you want it to be once you get your new construction added. So your roof might start to look like what um, the existing roof was, and we'll go over that another day since we've just done so much today. But I'll show you guys how to do you know, a hip roof versus a gabled roof, but I want all of you guys to have a little bit more floor plan so that I can try to help you guys draw the roof the way that you want it to. So that probably won't be for another week, week and a half, okay? Um, so let me go over again what we have. So we all should have an existing plan that we can put on our uh, project sheets. We also, and actually on this, what I'd like you guys to do is at some point go ahead and draw all of the walls and doors too on the interior. We didn't do that together yet, but I'm sure you can. Um, and then on your demolition plan, we at least have the minimum project requirements of getting rid of this back part because it isn't to code. So you can rebuild it, you can go a different direction, it's totally up to you. But either way, with all of these plans, once you're done with the existing base plan, please make sure that you turn it off. When we were going through some of our examples from the summer, you could tell who accidentally left their base plans on. So just make sure the minute you're done, turn them off. So hopefully at some time today, you'll turn those off. And then I the... Have a question, sure. If we're doing like a two-story home, mm -hmm. 
score would be important to us. We have an average on um, the first floor and the second floor. Yeah. But if we're starting from scratch, mm -hmm. we would do an underlay of the first floor on the second floor so we can Absolutely. see where we need to. Absolutely. Yeah. That would make and I think, I'm pretty sure by default, let me kind of play with it with you, but let me go ahead and add a new level, a second level, because we deleted ours. And I'm going to see if it automatically adds the underlay, but if not, I'll show you guys how to add it. So I'm gonna sneak in here. And actually, one thing that I could even do is rename the roof level, but let's just go with this. So I'm gonna call this upper level, and I'll keep it at nine feet. No, just take me to the upper level. Is it this button? Yeah. So the upper floor right now automatically has the walls coming up. And the reason why, this is still kind of incorrect. So if you look at my elevation, do you see that I have my wall set to go up to my roof? So it's kind of cutting through my upper level. Um, and that's typically right on perimeter walls, just like here, because you usually take your walls on the exterior and you shoot them all the way up. So by default, they should, your underlay um, should be showing the, sorry, the walls below because they actually exist on that level. Now, one thing that's missing, let me look at my plan one more time. Let's say that there is a staircase that you're trying to align to. So let me draw one generic wall that is only to the second level. Are you with me on this one? Okay, so I'm gonna pretend that my staircase is like right here. Now let's see how this looks on my second level. I'll get there one day. Okay, so it's not here. And what I can do is go to underlay and make it first floor existing. And there it is. Okay, so by default, the wall should be there, but if you need the interiors, then you can turn on the underlay. So what I'd like you guys to do for the next week, because remember, I can't believe it's already here. On Thursday, we're meeting at the kitchen showroom at, I forgot what it's called, Roth. So we'll be meeting there at 9.30 at Roth. Um, and actually, I think we're meeting at 9.45. Yeah, we're meeting at 9.45. She couldn't do 9.30. That was a little bit early. Um, so what I'd like you guys to do over the next week I hope that you guys can come in with at least a rough draft Revit file of what you want your final project to be. So again, over this previous week, it was hopefully just like sketches and trying to get something down. And then for this next week, it'll actually be putting into Revit. And um, what I'd like to do on Tuesday is even print some of these out and have everybody uh, similar to what we did with the midterm, I want you guys to print out just a rough draft of what you guys have for your floor plans and try to do a little bit of space planning. So don't go crazy and download a whole bunch of new furniture, but show us how a sofa and a table fit in your living room so we get an idea of the space. Throw in the beds in your bedrooms, throw in at least a toilet and a small counter. So nothing crazy, nothing detailed that you're gonna keep forever, but just enough for basic um, space planning. And then during class time, we will all print together and then exchange with at least two other people to kind of mark up and talk about it. And what I might do because they're big plans is I might just have you guys print one copy and then as you guys are having the discussion, you will kind of be your own scribe and circle and write the comments that other people are giving you. Does that make sense? So it'll be more of a conversation and less of a, you go take this and then bring it back. So plan on that for Tuesday. So you don't need to print before Tuesday. We'll do it in class, but make sure that your plan is developed enough to show the floor plan with space planning. It's really hard just to look at walls and know if something's gonna fit. Okay, so it's a lot of work, 
but I think I know that you guys will be able to do it. And the more that you guys can do up front in this first like week and this next week, it'll make the next few weeks so much easier for finishing it up. And you'll have that much more time to go online and download stuff, to maybe play with the rendering if you want to. Um, I'll try to get us some time in the other lab for Enscape or get it working in here. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that you guys can get extra credit on the final for designing another piece of furniture and having it printed. And I always ask for two copies. So you get to keep one of the prints and then um, I get to print, I get to keep one of the prints in my office. So I'll bring those in here. So just know that that's coming too. So if you start designing and laying out your space, you might think, oh, this is the thing that I want to design. All right. How are you guys feeling about phasing? What's your initial reaction? Good? Okay. So I think, honestly, the most important takeaway is this right here. Your view name and phasing to correspond, you manually set this. So we did this together. One of the things that we don't have the luxury of in this class is trying phasing again. So the next time you do this, you will most likely be on your own. I know you can do it, but take note of those things that I wrote on the board. I think they'll be really helpful. They're like the common pitfalls. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna run to my office and put the setbacks together really quick. So we're actually gonna start our site plan too. So let's go, this one, do main floor existing. And then, actually, do I see this on the site plan? No, just go to your site plan. I lied. And your site plan should stay new construction, as it is right now. Okay? And I want everybody to walk through this with me, because this is one of the sheets, or, or, or this view, will need to go on one of your sheets. It goes on your general sheet. So let's do this. Our CAD plan will eventually be turned off so we won't see this blue property line. So what I'd like to do is let's go to annotate, grab a detail line, and over here under line styles, go ahead and do center line. And simply just trace around your project. This is our property line. And then to make it easier for me to see this now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off of this view. Heather, I'm so glad you reminded me. It would have been hard to fit into another class. Okay, everybody got that all right? So the next part would be to go back to detail line, and this one is actually just a dashed line, or hidden, yep, go to hidden line. And for this one, we wanna start at the corner of the building and just pull it up, we're gonna trim it down in just one sec. And on this one, start on this corner and pull it over. So starting at this corner, draw it all the way up and then all the way over. From the back lot, we're going to go to, well, actually, I don't know if this will be easier. We can just do a create similar, and then I was going to offset it, but it's not the right line type. We need a 10-foot setback back here.
And then with this next line, I'm going to offset it twice. So I think that's FF. Nope. OF. I think, yeah. <laughs> so the first one is five feet. And this line right here is the sidewalk. So right next to this is, like, this is the first line of the sidewalk. Then you've got another line. So five feet is what you have if you're doing commercial. If you're doing a home, you need 20 feet there. Um, okay, so it's up to you to decide which one you're using. So my view scale on my site plan is 1 in 20 by default. And then I'm going to do an MA so I can fix these lines right here. Which one is that? Okay. So five feet for commercial and then 20 feet for residential. Those are your setbacks. And then these are just existing. You have to follow what's already there. And in fact, you don't even have to put these two there. So it's just an intent, like it's a stand up straight line. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are your setback lines for that property. And then this will eventually go on your cover sheet. And, um, will change the view so that you'll see the roof and not the house. So that'll be one thing that we'll probably have to update in just a bit, but for now this works. And then once we get a roof on it, we'll see if we have to um, change the extents of our view to go up higher, but it might already fit. <coughs> And now I can actually come around to help if you guys have questions, but that should get you started. So really, if you guys are able to finish up these plans today, you'll have part of your cover sheet started, your existing and demo are done, and your new construction is started too.